All right, welcome to the next part. So this is what we created last time. We're gonna start by doing a little bit of polishing. So let's start by turning off this multi-res just while we move some stuff around again. Just save us the GPU and CPU while we're doing it. I'm just gonna rotate this more and figure out a good direction layout that I like. There's really no rules to this. I like symmetry. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. Just move everything around to your heart's desire. Cool, I'm kind of liking this one. Let's switch back to the view just so we can get an idea. Cool. All right, now after seeing all this, I don't really like the lighting on it anymore. So let's just go back into the layout and we're just gonna add a couple point lights. These are 100% metallic right now, so they're just gonna absorb all the light. So just while we're doing the lighting, let's just turn the metallic and roughness a little bit just so we can see it. Go back to the light. Let's just turn this up to 1000 to give it a start. Let's try 5000. And we're just gonna duplicate this and put it over in this corner as well. And as we can see, this is already looking way better. Let's turn the multi-res back on, just so we can get an idea of how smooth everything is gonna be. Make sure everything is selected shade smooth. And then we're gonna mess around with the roughness and metallic again just to get it looking a lot better. Cool. So one thing with the lights, you can see how we're getting all this speckling. If you uncheck multiple importances, it won't actually reflect the light onto the image. That's what I'm talking about is these white parts right here. If you like it, leave multiple importances on. I don't, so I turn it off. Now that we're getting this look, let's just see what it looks like if we make the background black for a second. I'm liking that. Gives it a lot more uh, pop, in my opinion. And we're gonna do some more composition stuff to it now. I feel like there's an opportunity for a nice shape in the center here, so I'm just going to be adding Icosphere with subdivisions of five, so it's nice and smooth, shade it smooth. We're just gonna move it up and size it up so it's taking up a lot of space in the middle. And then let's just see what this Icosphere would look like if we set it to the same material. Looking very nice. And then we're just gonna duplicate this and move it down on the z-axis just so, so we have it there. Maybe move it forward, size it down a little bit. Cool. All right, and now we're going to be adding the element of the chain around it that you saw in the beginning. So how we're gonna be doing that is we're gonna start by creating a curved circle. If you hit slash on the nums pad, you'll bring it only up to the thing you have selected. So we're gonna do that. Make sure you leave it on the origin in the middle. We're just gonna size this up right now. And then we're gonna create a cur or a mesh torus. Same thing as before, leave it where it is. Just think about the size and what a chain looks like. So we're just gonna mess with this a little bit to get it more uh, looking like a chain. Now that we have it like that, shade it smooth, and then we're just gonna size it on the X and size it on the Y until we get it looking around what with a chain would look like. Maybe size it more on the Y. And then we're gonna go edit it, go above it. And then we're just gonna select this part right here select this part right here, these half, and then we're just gonna G and move it out. Make 
make sure you have the x-ray on because otherwise you're gonna see that happen. Move it out. And then we're getting that. Go back to object, size it down a little bit. And then we're gonna right click down here. And then we're gonna change the origin to the 3D cursor. We're gonna duplicate this, rotate it on the Y axis. And then move this so that it is like a chain. And then when you get it looking around what you want it to look, just make sure this is centered. We're gonna select both of these and then hit Control J to join them. And down here. All right, jump cut cause it crashed. So as I was saying, once you join them, go down here, go to array, and go over here. Go to curve on array. We're gonna change this from the X to the Y. And just scrub that number until you get it looking like a chain. There we go. Now that we got that lined up, choose Bezier Circle down here, change it to Y. And we're just gonna turn this up until we get it looking how we want. I'm gonna size this up just so the chain's a little bigger. When you size it up, just make sure you turn the amount down vertical and then we're just going to size this until it is perfectly like a chain. There we go. Now that we got that, what you're going to do is you're going to go over here and you're going to apply the array modifier and then you're going to apply the curve modifier. Now once you have that, you can hit slash to exit. We're going to rotate this on the X90 and then size this down just move this up to about where we want it. One good way to figure out how to center the circle is go to where your camera is. See that my Z is on the 3.3, so on this one we're just going to take this and the Z, we're just going to take 3.3. Now it'll be centered. When we've got that, we're just going to move it back on the Y axis so it's behind it. And just size it up so it takes up a lot of the space. And now let's view this. Cool. As you can see, it's looking pretty nice. We're gonna take this chain and we're gonna apply a new texture to it. We're gonna turn the roughness down, the metallic all the way up, just to give an idea. Nice black chain. Base color, we're gonna change it to a yellow-ish, and then just turn it down and make it more brown. And then we're just gonna slowly turn the roughness up until we get the reflections of the gold chain. Now we have a nice gold chain in the background. All right, now we're gonna work on this texture a little bit. I like it, but I think it could be more colorful. So we're gonna go over here into shading, switch over to object. And right now we have the basic principle BSDF setup with nothing going on. So we're gonna start by hitting shift A and we're just gonna add a color ramp change this down here from RGB to HSL and FAR and then if you set both colors to the same color you'll get a full gradient. We're just going to take this, plug this into the base color right here and we're going to search get a gradient texture, plug this into here and then we're just going to node wrangler that to get a mapping node. We're going to get a layer weight node plug that in and then down here we're going to change it from generated to reflection we're getting a nice sort of look right now then we can just mess with all the scaling and everything to get the colors we want right now this looks a little overwhelming in the colors don't worry it's not going to be like this once we get it set up how we want and now that we have this all set up what we're going to do is we're just going to drag this material out we're gonna do a mix shader node. And then down here, we're gonna get a glossy BDS or BSDF and plug this in. Take this color, take it off there. Plug this into that color. Turn the roughness to around there. And 
then we're just gonna mess with the factor until it is barely rainbow. Just getting a little bit in there. Cool. Now that we have that on the edges, I'm gonna mess around with it just a smidgen more. I'm gonna go over here, uh, noise texture, and we're just gonna see what this would look like if I plug this into the scale. While we're messing with this again, let's just change the factor all the way that way just so we can see it a little bit better. And we're just gonna change this around over here. Sometimes it's good just to see what all the different ones look like. Sometimes different ones look cool. I think I like the normal one a lot because it's giving me a lot of that interesting sort of purple look. And down here we can mess with the noise now. Just to give us a sort of slightly different look. Cool, now that we got that, let's go back over here. And just turn the mix shader back down. And now we got a sort of interesting color with a uh, sort of reflection gradient on it. Now if we go back to the layout, shade smooth everything, make sure all the resolutions are on. Now we have sort of a base chrome type sort of thing. Now that we got this, I am just going to mess around with a little bit more lighting. Let's see what it would look like if I added a uh, area light here. I'm gonna size it up seven times, rotate it on the X90. Go to the side view, just so we can see what that looks like. And move this so we get it pointed upwards. Go to the light, turn off multiple importance. Let's turn it up to a thousand just to see what that would look like. As you can see, we're getting more lighting down here. If we crank this up to, let's say, 5,000, what does it look like? Now we're getting a lot of lighting. You can change this by just sizing it up to make it a little less strong. And now we're getting that look. Cool. Now let's just fine tune the shading a little bit more. Just zoom in on a certain area that you really want to make sure looks nice. And then we're just going to mess with the metallic and the roughness. See if we turn the metallic all the way up on that, it gets really colorful. Just slowly mess with the shading until you get what you want. I'm liking that a lot. I think that looks very clean. Here, we're gonna make this its own material by clicking right here. And now we can edit this without changing everything, and we're just gonna change the roughness on the middle one to make it solid. In fact, let's just get rid of that. We're just gonna turn the subsurface up on this to one, and then just change the roughness so that we get a nice sort of black orb in the middle. Perfect. Now that we got this, we are gonna render this part out and then throw it into Photoshop to do the final sort of touches on everything. So I'll see you guys in Photoshop. All right, before we hop into Photoshop, I guess one important thing I forgot to cover was rendering. So when I render, I do it in cycles, I do GPU, and I just leave all of this alone. The sizing is set at this. If you want it to be 4K, just change this to 200%. I'm going to do that because I want it to look very nice. You don't have to do that. It'll take longer. It'll, it'll take a lot longer. So now that we have that set up, I will go up here, file, render image, and it'll start to render. And then now once this renders, I will see you in Photoshop. All right, now we have it in Photoshop. It's all rendered and 
I'm not really going to do too much to it except just mess with brightness, contrast levels, and all that really. Just a smidgen. Turn the brightness up a little bit. Mess with the contrast. Go down to the hue and saturation. Maybe just turn the saturation up a little bit, like plus 20. Turn the lightness down like 4. What I'm doing right now is not even necessary. Probably won't even be able to tell the difference after I'm done with it, but just turn the vibrance up a little bit. And boom. Perfect. And there we go. That is your first basic intro into Chrome type. I will be doing more in depth detailed ones in the future and have fun, go to town. Make some fucking art.